welcome to Salubrious Skin with Dr. Irene. It has been said that there are now 155 autoimmune diseases listed, and some are more common than others, but they all lead to chronic illness. Today, I want to talk about chronic illness and how it can linger for all the wrong reasons. Who better to dissect the mind and empower us into transforming our life than life coach Shireen Blom? Welcome, Shireen. Hi, how are you? Nice oh, to be here again. <laughs> <laughs> you are a regular guest of this podcast because you're so insightful and so empowering in your words and you know you really make things make sense for me at least and I know a lot of my patients that watch this <laughs> have told me the same. So when I was thinking about this and you know understanding why this actually happens because I see this a lot in my patients as well. And yep. they say various comments that makes me realize this is happening. For instance, someone had said to me, you know, if I don't have this illness, what am I going to do with my time? And so that was massive yeah, red flags, massive alarm yeah, bells. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, uh, with this topic being dear to my heart, as I realized I created this unhealthy bond with my illness, saying mm. it out loud makes it sound a little bit bizarre, but is this common do you think this is a common thing people do where they've had an illness for a long time and they become they become almost friends with it yeah absolutely like anything it becomes a habit it becomes a pattern mm -hmm. and we stay in our comfort zone of what we know yeah. right and that almost like predictability of what we know and you know also what we have to remember is that so much of our behavior is governed by the subconscious mind which, which is, you know, 95% of our behavior is, is subconscious. So we're not actually aware of the little kind of sneaky patterns and hidden agendas that we have that are going on subconsciously programming us into a certain state. Yeah. You know, and it's almost like knowing that a food is really bad for you or a friend is really bad for you, but you just can't get enough. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's, 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 it's that same kind of you know, just sticking on to what you know. So what are the phrases people would say, do you think? Like I said to you, that patient said, well, what am I going to do with my time if mm. I don't have this illness? What are, the, mm. what are the alarm bells people need to perhaps look into or be, becoming aware of that they have formed this unhealthy bond with their illness? Yeah, and look, I think it's really important to understand what we're talking about. If we're talking about an autoimmune disease um, or illness, as opposed to like, you know, something like cancer. I know when, when I work with them um, at Think Pink, I've been working there for eight years. And so a lot of women kind of struggle to kind of embrace the concept of, have I manifested this illness in my body? A lot of people kind of struggle with that. Mm. Um, and, you know, when we're talking about the empowerment and self-empowerment, we come from the space that I'm taking 100% responsibility for everything that I'm manifesting in my life, including illness or any dis-ease in the body. Mm. So what that means to answer your question is that certain phrases, we may, for example, have a little bit of victim mentality, you know, like, like well, I am, I am my pain. I'm so used to having pain. I'm so used to having discomfort. Um, mm. You know, I just accept it. Like, this is just who I am right? I've always had it. I always will. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it forms a part of our identity. And a lot of people can say, I hear people say bad things always happen to me or, yeah. you know, it's typical. Yeah, I was cursed with this. Yes. Yeah. I was cursed with this. Yeah. 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 And that, that gives um, uh, an element of helplessness, which then I guess puts them into that victim mentality, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And another phrase that I really, really would love people to become aware of because science now knows otherwise is a lot of people say, this is in my family. This is genetic. Uh, yes. And that's something that, because we now know through epigenetics that we can remap that, right? There's certain, obviously certain traits that yes, will be, will be genetically predisposed to. Um, however, we now know that we can shift DNA. So again, that's very empowering, which is what we're talking about. And I think what's really, really important for people to understand is, you know, again, I, and we, I think we've spoken about this a few times, is that we have close to 80,000 thoughts a day, mm. right? Um, the subconscious mind 
with regards to detail in our environment can pick up 2 million bits of information every second. So what I'm saying here is that we have so many thoughts that we are unaware of. And these are the type of phrases that we want to start to tune into. So like the little phrases that come to you in the little subtle moments, for example, when you're stopped at a light or, you know, you're just washing the dishes or you're, you know, just in these like little subtle moments, these thoughts come and say, you know, like, why me? Like, why did this happen to me? And how did I get stuck here? And it's that story that we want to catch because it's that story that is programming your body into illness. Mm. And one thing about genetics people need to understand is that uh, the the genes need to be in their right environment to be expressed. So just because something is genetic doesn't mean it's inevitable. It needs to be in the right environment for it to be expressed, which is what you're saying. And so what we are, and so I was going to say, okay, so say someone says, yes, I understand. I perhaps am contributing. I'm, you know, I do get these negative thoughts. How does someone rise above it? Because I know even with my dad at the moment, he's got a lot of pain in his knees and he's become really grumpy <laughs> and yeah. you know, he's really focusing on this pain. And I think with pain, it is very consuming. People do get miserable and it affects mm. their mental state. How does someone rise above that when they're in that pain? And I know with myself, I had the uh, physical pain with the psoriasis, you know, being covered my whole mm. entire body. How does someone mm. rise above that when they feel so stuck to it? Yeah. And, and, you know, pain in itself becomes addictive. Mm. Um, the body actually does get addicted to pain, especially if we're on medication, right? Because the body can get um, physiologically addicted to pain medication and then produce pain um, mm. to, to, to get medication. So, it, 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 you know, we're dealing with something so deep um, and programmable. And, you know, before I answer your question, you know, what we have to remember is that every thought we have creates an environment in the body, Mm -hmm. Um, just extending on what we were talking about that. So what that means is that what you focus on is what you're going to get. So if you're focusing on the pain, Mm -hmm. right, the pain is going to amplify or the pain is going to enhance. If you, you know, it's something, another thing, another way of saying that is where your focus goes, your energy flows. So if like whatever we're focusing on expands. So if we're focusing on the pain, the pain's going to expand. Mm. Um, I remember hearing a story. I was was just going to say that I had a patient on Saturday say to me about period pain and she goes, Oh, when the kids are around, I I don't, I don't think it's as bad because I don't focus on it. You know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like probably it's about a six or five or a six, but when the kids are around, Oh, it's probably about a 10. And yeah, interesting, right? <laughs> yeah, so she's like, I'm, she actually said I'm being distracted, so the pain's less. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And it is about that, you know, distracting the mind. I remember hearing a story about these, um, what they called um, med- the marathon monks. And these monks were running a thousand kilometers. Mm. And somebody kind of asked them, you know, how do you manage that pain and the lactic acid buildup and all of that? physical, you know, exhaustion that comes up when you're running a thousand kilometers. And, you know, they spoke about how they go into this kind of meditative state. And one of the monks spoke about, he doesn't focus on the foot that's on the ground. He focuses, focuses on the foot that's in the air. Uh, so so it relief. almost makes him, yeah. So yeah. it almost makes him feel like he's gliding oh. right as opposed to the foot that's on the ground that's hitting and you know that's where you're going to he- feel that kind of ricochet through the body or that pain through the body so what that means is that if we can find a really strong focus point so with regards to pain when i feel pain is what i will do is i will kind of travel into the pain like if we can imagine we're going to go into like a, a little space shuttle and we can journey into this, into the pain, into our cells. And I will kind of break it down. Like, what am I seeing here? What does it look like? Like, I'm, am I in this mesh? Am I in this, you know, whatever, whatever it kind of, you know, what are the colors and what does it look like? And I will basically use my breath to just lighten the space. So turn the light, turn the pain, like just 
if I feel it as like, let's say it's a deep red or, you know, like a deep black of, of intense pain, if that's what it comes across, I will just kind of imagine my breath as this like swirling light in it. That's lightening, lightening, lightening. And I'll just imagine it getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and try and move it out my body. Mm. Um, so that's a way that you can really work with pain. Um, the other thing is to create, so that's kind of embracing and stepping into the pain, right? Yeah. Um, the other thing that you can do is create a distraction point. So, you know, taking yourself to a beautiful garden or beach or forest and, and you know, and if you're really struggling with it, then listening to a guided meditation um, mm. to help you do that. Other breathing exercises, walking you know, listening to music is a really great way to shift state as well. Um, shaking it out, you know, what depends on the level of your pain and what pain you're experiencing, mm. but any of those kind of distraction tools where you're not actually just, you know, sitting and feeling the throbbing or whatever the pain is coming across at time, whatever it is. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. And I, you know, various times as you were talking, I was remembering, things because I used to experience before I had my little boy I had I used to have a uh, pretty bad period pain and I remember you know there was moments where if I watched I was watching the Sydney Olympics I remember and I was in terrible yeah. pain and I remember just watching the opening ceremony and that was alleviating it because I was mm -hmm. distracted for something else yeah exactly yeah. put something on I mean even having a mantra mm. right just even having a mantra where you focus on I mean anything that's going to distract you yeah. Um, is a really great, but, it, and again, it's, it's knowing that what you focus on is going to expose, uh, expand mm -hmm. and whatever you're focusing on is just, you're going to increase it. So if you're focusing on the pain, talking mm -hmm. about the pain, you know, feeling it intensely in your body, you know, worrying about the pain, it, it's just going to amplify. Mm -hmm. So going back to the whole, um, unhealthy relationship we would have with the chronic illness and how mm. it becomes our friend uh, or even part of our personality. Mm. How does mm. someone create, I guess, a new personality or, or, or um, remove themselves from that relationship? Because like you said, yeah. it can be an, un, an unhealthy uh, addiction to food. It can be an unhealthy relationship with a friend, you know, all mm. this, um, commonality in behavior keeps these bad things around or unhealthy things around but how does someone break free if they've had say Crohn's for 20 years or you know skin condition mm. and, and it, you know I think the words unfortunately for my experience it was always the words that I was told that this is never going to go this is your own body attacking yeah. itself um, so the words that were relayed to me made me believe that this was something that was connected to me forever. And, yeah, and how do yeah. you sort of, I guess, reprogram that relationship? Or Yeah, and that's really important to create what's called a reframe where you're changing the meaning in your mind mm -hmm. and changing the meaning. Because what we have to remember is that our beliefs are coding us in every moment. So what we're believing creates that sense of, of, of focus. It creates the mindset. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I remember when I had my rosacea and I remember talking about this with you when we yeah. did, you know, our presentation a few years ago together, when I had rosacea and my whole face was covered. I mean, I remember, you know, the doctor saying, well, this is something that you're going to have to manage for the rest of your life. Like it will not go away. Mm. And I just remember thinking, no, like that. I just, I, I choose not to believe in that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and I'll, I'll talk about in a moment what I did to heal that, um, my daily tools and practice and rituals that I, that I came to, but just coming back to the ability to reframe what we have to remember is that when we're stuck in pain, so like, for example, my husband suffers from chronic migraine, mm -hmm. right? So there's almost one of the things that I've noticed is that he's always in a state of anticipating pain or fearing pain. Mm. So even somebody like Crohn's that you've experienced trauma. Mm. Um, so, you know, anytime that like, even, you know, depending on what your pain experience, you may have had an accident and so you're left with pain. So what you have to remember is that that pain experience is almost like a form of post-traumatic stress. Yeah. right? That the brain is replaying. So a lot of the time, like we may be ruminating on, 
the event and not even realizing, remember this happens subconsciously. So it's really important to kind of tune into your thoughts and tune in and gain that Mm -hmm. self-awareness. But getting really clear around that story that you're holding and, you know, are you in a state of fear? So let's say for a person that's Mm. had Crohn's, you know, I mean, there's going to be a lot of fear around, you know, am I going to have to go back into the, into hospital? Am I going to have another operation? Am I going to be experiencing pain where I'm out and it's going to be so debilitating? And I, you know, what is going to happen? So Mm. the mind is in a form of anxiety kind of anticipating and practicing. So, you know, even having that reframe and bringing yourself into the now, bringing yourself into the moment, practicing mindfulness um, is a really, really important tool to say, you know, well, what's happening right now um, and what can I do to ensure I'm ready at whatever stage? And especially with regards to that rumination, um, you know, okay, that was six months ago, that was five years ago, that was, you know, in the past. What's mm. happening right now? Where am I today? So bringing yourself back into the moment and creating that reframe, creating that shift. So, mm. okay, that happened. How can I see that now? Right? So like, for example, when I had my rosacea, it was like, for me, it was like, okay, this is my body healing. This is my body releasing. Right? So I almost found a positive mm. in that in that outbreak, I was like, okay, everything's come up to my face now. This is, you know, what I was saying to myself was, you know, this is helping me heal. This is helping me cleanse. This is helping me get really healthy. This is helping me kind of let go of my past. So I allowed my body to go through the illness and the cycle of releasing whatever it was releasing, as opposed to pushing back on it, going, I don't want this to happen to me. You know, I just want a paper bag over my head and da 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 da. I just let, I kind of stepped through it and it gave me a kind of resiliency and endurance through that. And, and, you know, on the days where it really did get really hot and itchy and uncomfortable, and it really was painful and emotionally painful as well. um, You know, it could kind of let me ride the wave. Mm. So finding that reframe in your mind of how you can find the positivity or the purpose in the pain Mm. right is this a way of your body releasing fear is this a way of your body coming into balance is this a way of your body releasing the past um you know working with the emotions Mm. to work with your body through that you know like i always think to myself a beautiful analogy is the butterflies transformation uh, the caterpillars transformation into a butterfly Mm. right and you think to yourself this poor caterpillar gets into this dark, tight, uncomfortable space (laughs) and his body literally turns to goo. Like there must be a level of pain as he completely dissolves. Mm. And it's that pain, it's that ability to sit in the goo um, and allow the pain to transform, to use the pain as a catalyst for transformation Mm. that, you know, this is something that my body is working through and help your body use your breath, use your mind, use your focus to move that pain through the body. Mm. And it's that trust. I think it's that trust Absolute that trust. we all yeah. lose uh, mm. as soon as we have an illness. Or if, uh, and I speak personally because that, that was pretty much my road where as soon as the psoriasis came out the very first time, and, and this mm. isn't to to disrespect any um, modality or any person's belief or anything like that. It's really just the information that I was given from the very beginning was that this is something I'm going to have for life. So my my body was um, turning against me. So my body was working against me from the very, you've got an autoimmune disease and your body's attacking itself. And it's mm. been a long thing. So this belief that I couldn't trust my body anymore, it lost its ability to know to do the right thing. So as mm-hmm. a result, I needed to let go of the belief that my body actually knew what to do. So I needed to take control and I needed to suppress it. Exactly. And I needed to do all these things because it had no, it had no idea. It lost its way. It um, randomly... <laughs> didn't want to function normally anymore and it really wasn't only until you know it wasn't even during uni years I would say even post uni years where I realized gosh actually uh, my body was doing 
what, what it was reacting to was saying, I don't want these chemicals in here. So instead mm. of getting better, which what they had anticipated, I was getting worse. So all medication yeah. I was given, my body did the opposite. So instead of the, the skin healing, it would exacerbate. And then that even, you know, freaked them out and freaked me out more because it was like, oh, well, even more so now, it's still not listening. You know, we're trying to yes. tell it what to do and it's still not listening. It's rebelling. It's not. And in actual fact, it was protecting me. So I think yes. I lost yes. that trust in myself. Yes. And, and we're very disempowered by that kind of medicine model in all areas. Mm, do you know what I mean? Even yes. you think about in childbirth, you yeah. know what I mean? Where we think, oh, I need a medicalized birth because my body doesn't know how to do it. So the whole empowerment movement is about giving yourself that power back and trusting your body to the wisdom of your body. Yeah. So, you know, pain is a warning signal. Pain is a warning signal that something is out of balance, yeah. right? Like you look at the autoimmune, that the yin and yang, the, mm. you know, is out of balance. Like why? So another really great tool is to question why this is happening to you, but not with a victim mindset, with a curious mindset. So not saying, mm. oh, why is this happening to me? <laughs> saying but the why? exact <laughs> sentence, but in a, yeah, but now going, hmm why is this happening to yeah, me, yeah. right? With that level of curiosity to say, why is there an unbalance? What is this unbalance? Let me go deep. Let me get, let me journey into the cellular experience of the pain mm. and understand what's happening and what needs to be cleared, right? Mm. Because it was the same thing, like what I was saying with, with my rosacea and other pain that I was, you know, like I, I just, I remember, having, you know, gallbladder issues and a gallbladder attack when I, when I lost my gallbladder just before. And that, you know, I stepped into it and I was like, okay, like what is the emotion that my body's releasing here? Mm. You know, step into the wisdom of your body. And it is, you know, what, like what you were saying about trusting your body, mm. the first step is recognizing the fear. Because mm. if you can recognize the, the fear that you are holding around the pain, then you can flip it, right? Mm. This is all about how we flip our focus, yeah. right? So recognize, number one, am I focusing on my pain? What's the story that I'm creating around the pain? What are, what are, the, what's the, what's, what are the thoughts going through my mind? Let me unpack that. Let me become really aware around what I am saying to myself about the pain. Am I focusing on the pain? Am I amplifying it? Am I, is it um is it growing or, you know, how, and then coming into the space of the reframe, how can I flip my focus here? Mm. And there's a really great system for flipping our focus now. And, and what we want to look at is that if you can train your mind and it's something that I call mind focus training, it's, it's how, what my, the type of meditation that I teach mind focus meditation. And what is to understand is that the brain focuses through our senses. It focuses through our sense of sight, through our sense of sound, through our sense of feeling, through our sense of smell and taste, right? So number one, working with essential oils, mm -hmm. right, is a really, really powerful technique to shift mindset and shift focus because the oils will instantly trigger an emotional reaction, emotional state in your body, a desired emotional state, mm -hmm. right? So for example, a person that, is experiencing a lot of anxiety, uses something like lavender oil, will instantly bring a, a state of calm. It, it mm. triggers the memory center. So working with a sense of smell through essential oils is a really fantastic technique working with pain. The next is through visualization, right? So what I was talking about before, how I visualized the pain, how I created this light that went through the pain and I would kind of visualize this beautiful golden light dissolving that tightness and shrinking it and shrinking it and shrinking it. What I was doing there was utilizing my muscle of visualization to program my mind into a focus to create that desired state in my body. Again, distracting the mind, focusing on lying on a beach or floating in water. Mm. Um, that was something that I use a lot in my pain. I kind of have this meditation where I just imagine myself like a starfish in water and I'm just floating through it, right? Mm. So my mind is, because I'm focusing on this visualization, we have to remember that the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's imagined and what's real. So yeah. if you're imagining it in your mind, the experience 
and the climate happens in the body. Mm. The next is through sound. What are we telling ourselves, right? What is the mind hearing? So that is internally through our self-talk. So having really positive affirmations. I trust my body. I mean, I remember when I was, you know, my last pregnancy and I wanted to do this myself. I wanted a full on empowered birth process. I didn't want any drugs. I knew I could do it. My mantra to myself, when my contractions started, I didn't let them close in. I was like, my body is opening. My body can do this. Like I was born to do this. I trust the wisdom of my body. So I had all these mantras to work through each contraction, right? And each kind of moment, instead of fearing it, I, let, I moved with it and I trusted that I could do this. The other sound like externally is using music, right? Or a guided meditation or something else that you can hear to program that sense. Mm. And then the feeling sense. And the best way to program the feeling sense is utilizing your breath. So breathing into the body, using your breath to dissolve the pain, using your breath to kind of break it down. Like you can imagine your breath is kind of breaking through sand, you know, and just like crumbling it and just kind of dissolving that tightness of pain. So all those ways are ways that you can program the mind. And it, that's a really great way to deconstruct it and put it in a system for yourself to go, okay, well, where are my senses? Let me direct my sense of sight. Let me direct my sense of sound. Let me direct my sense of feeling. Let me direct my sense of smell. Taste is, we can distract ourselves with taste, I suppose. That's through what that's emotional eating, I guess. Yeah. Um, but there would be ways to, you know, distract yourself through taste as well. But mainly those that I discussed there are really powerful ways to flip your focus mm. and ensure that your focus is in a moving towards healing rather than focusing on pain. And really implementing these systems into your uh, day as opposed to, because yes. same with you said, all the thoughts that we have in, in during the day, uh, we need to sort of put these into our schedule because these are very new behaviors. So with new behaviors, yes. we're going to forget, we're going to be unmotivated, we're going to think it's not important, we're, we're going to stick to what we know, even though it's not very productive and conducive to our health. So it's almost like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to schedule my meditation at 7.30 every morning. I'm going to use essential oils during my meditation to help me with that deeper connection to myself. I'm going to journal yes. every night and, you know, express where I'm at and what, what I've learned for the day. So I think scheduling it really helps integrate Absolutely. that behaviour into something more... Yes continuous when you were speaking the well, it's all about habits right so just, habit, just yeah. extending yeah so it's all about um extending on what you're saying there it's so essential because mm. what we're doing is we're breaking bad habits right yeah. the experience of pain right now is a habit yeah so we just need to stop that habit and reprogram it so just like we're spending time right now in the bad habit yeah. we just need to stop doing that and implement you know the the, the 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 essential tools that will help us and the good habits yeah, right yeah. um and you know something like like what i was talking about before of um the visual auditory kinesthetic smell you know breaking down like establishing that mind focus is actually just to write it out for yourself mm. what's your visual image that helps what are your mantras what like how are you going to breathe through your body like actually just writing out the system for yourself like writing out that strategy and then it is through practice practice like you said waking up and doing it doing it in the shower um next time you experience pain or even when your pain is at like a three four you know start working with this so that when it goes to you know six seven eight if it does get to that you know how to implement it. So just starting to practice it, practice it, practice it. The brain learns through repetition. So the more that you can do it, the more consistent, the more competent, right? The more mm -hmm. confident you get and it just becomes a new habit. So there's two things that I want to talk about before we finish for today. Uh, one thing that came up um, and I see a lot in clinic and I certainly have experienced myself, so I'm not impartial to it, is um, impatience. So yes. um, wanting to be healthy yesterday, wanting, you know, I see a lot of women wanting to conceive, wanting to be pregnant yesterday, 
Um, everything should have happened last year or last month. If only I'd done all this 10 years ago. For, you know, all this impatience that people... Yeah, it's the C word. Yeah. <laughs> the C word. It's control, right? Yeah, all yeah. of that is the mind taking control of a fearful situation. So generated by fear. And so what... Generated about, by fear. Yeah. So, and, so, and I mean, impatience is that, you know, none of us want to do the work. Like none yeah, of this is easy, yeah, right? Yeah, the mind's yeah. going to look for the ways the way is of least effort so we don't want to go oh i need to meditate every day i mean my rosacea took me two years you know it took me two years to detox and clear it yeah you know i look back now and i was like oh yeah only two years it was hard work right no one wants to do it and i for me i just keep bringing myself back to that poor caterpillar you know what i mean that he doesn't question he doesn't go get me out of here <laughs> right? I, just, I don't want to sit here for three weeks or whatever. I want to be, yeah. I want to have my wings now. You know, yeah. it's, yeah. it's really trusting. Remember that everything is a cycle. Pain is a cycle. Healing mm. is a cycle. Yeah. So just when you sit in that and you stop resisting, flowing with it again, trusting in the cycle, working organically with situations as opposed to trying that all of that that you were talking about Mm. is the mind seeking control right i want to be in charge of my healing like this should happen now right definitely Uh, finally i want to i I know we don't have much time but i just want to talk about self-sabotage as a as a final thing because you know sometimes people are well and i remember seeing this in a patient of mine um, and we, we, you know, we, we discussed it and, and realized what was behind the self-sabotage and she, you know, released it and she, and she got through it. But what's the whole concept of people self-sabotaging? And I mean, from the perspective of they, they know what they shouldn't be doing. They don't actually do it. They get mm. better and then they re- revert back to the habits that got them sick to begin with. What is yeah. it that... And I, I know food is a huge one because, um, you know, it's easy, it's accessible. Yeah. You might be it's cooking for your family. <laughs> and so, you, mm. so, for instance, I, I certainly was trying to think, well, you know, this food I'm giving my little boy is all organic, so surely it should be fine for me. And then, you know, I'd have some, you know, um, millet bread or... or um, oat bread and then i'd have a few spots come out i'm like but it's organic why Why yeah 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 and you know it's about you know we we go through that process of forgetting right um you know it's it it is so we kind of have to be gentle with ourselves that we may kind of lapse back into things like that like you go oh millet bread like you know oh that's awful of you to go and have millet bread like you know so i'm I'm (laughs) pretty rebellious when it comes to food (laughs) yeah like oh my god live on the edge right (laughs) um but um you know so we do have to be gentle with ourselves but with regards to self-sabotage you know one of one of the things that i keep coming back to in myself is just you know like choose yourself you know, it's about owning our worthiness and being honest with ourselves that this is what's right for us. This is our path. This is, you know, it's working towards yourself as opposed to against yourself. And I'm going to say it again, even with the self-sabotage, it comes back to fear, right? Mm. It's like when we just go, oh, stuff it. You know what I mean? Like, and we, when, when we're in that negative cycle, the self-sabotage comes. So it's very much about, you know, committing to yourself and choosing you and having that self-respect of just going, you know, one of the things that I always like to do is just before I eat something and I'll just say, okay, hold on, just pause for a moment. Think of the consequence, like Mm. think of the consequence, you know, what's going to happen. Think of the itch, think of the heat, you know, think of the bloatedness, think of the nausea, you know, like all that stuff, like, is it worth it? You know, Mm. like just, it's just constantly being in that space of self-awareness. And, and, and sometimes we may go, okay, yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, I was going to say, and, and if you go, well, yeah, it is worth it. Just, just eat it. <laughs> you know, if it's that. And, just, and then ride the wave of it, right? Yeah, like yeah. just take responsibility for it and go, okay, you know what? I'm going to experience this today and I'm going to get back on track next time. Do yeah. you know what I mean? So it's yeah. about like, like that's not necessarily self-sabotage. You no, know what I mean? No. Self-sabotage. And so it's, again, it's really catching those sneaky habits, you know, of knowing when you're sabotaging yourself, knowing when you're going to kind of give yourself a break. It's, it's all intention based, right? Mm, Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, 
And again, just catching that story, catching that story in your head, taking control of it by reframing it, flipping your focus, giving yourself some really positive stories, positive thoughts, positive imagery to work with and know that you are not your pain. Yeah. Right. That it's just, it's something unbalanced. It's an imbalance in your body. It doesn't Mm. own you. It is not your identity, right? Mm. Who you choose to be right now is who you are right now. Mm. Um, You know, and you can have whatever thoughts you want through your head and that can empower you to create whatever reality you want for yourself. Yeah. You are not a victim to your circumstance. You are in control. Yeah, that's, that's perfectly said. So if people are struggling and they want to um, have you help them or wo- to work with you, how can they get in contact with you? Um, well, I'd love you to go and visit my new website, which is shreemblom.com. Um, it actually launches next week. So um, I do have the bubetrue.com.au up. Um, as well. So I'm going to run that, that website simultaneously with Shereen Blom for a while yep. while I'm transitioning over. But, um, you know, I've got a really great ebook on my new Shereen Blom video called Think Yourself Happy, yeah. which um, is really just 101 affirmations to empower your day. So there'll be some really great affirmations on that ebook, in that ebook to, um, to, to work with. And at the end of the year, I will have my book out as well. So, Yay. That too. so that'll be really good. Uh, and what's the book called? And also have you titled Facebook, it? The Essence of You. Oh, perfect. Okay. That's nice. Yes. So that'll yeah. be out yes. end of 2018. 2018, beginning of 2019. So okay. oh, yeah. Nice. So look out for that. But if you kind of come on my website, all the, the details and, and also on Facebook, I'm, I'm doing quite a lot of weekly coaching tips and blogs and my yeah. meditations every Monday you have, I have my Monday meditation. So that's Shereen Blum Ross on Facebook. So oh, you know, come, good. come play with me. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. I mean, even just uh, what we're speaking to speaking about today, you know, really will inspire people to make those changes and they're very simple and, but very, very effective uh, in yeah. making that change. So that's, that's really, it's been amazing as usual, very insightful and hugely empowering. And one thing that you just ended with was it doesn't, it doesn't always mean self-sabotage if you do something wrong. It's be kind to yourself. And I think sometimes I need to be kinder to myself because I've been very Absolutely. regimented over the years in, in attaining this health. And I, I think I need to just relax a little bit and go, yeah, yeah. it's not that bad you know, you're yeah. over it. It's all yeah. Fun. Yeah. It's just keeping this, keeping yourself calm and, and happy because even those thoughts can be quite, quite yeah. toxic as well. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, one other thing as well is you can put in the show notes of this, the podcast is the, um, my meditation podcast where I've got a whole bunch of guided meditations at peace in my pocket. So that's on the podcast app and that's free that people can use as well. So yeah. yeah. So that's a really good tool. Peace in my pocket. Uh, do they go to, where do they go to? ITunes. on apple podcast apple yeah podcast. apple podcast you'll find okay. it on on itunes okay um, i've also got it on my website but we can put it in the, the show notes here yeah excellent all yeah. right yeah Thanks, awesome Shireen. lovely thank and, you for having me oh uh, it's been a pleasure and i'll have you again i'm sure something will come up oh. in my head and i'll be like <laughs> Shireen can answer this question i have <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for the beautiful work you're doing for everyone uh, out there so oh you know wonderful it's, it's, awesome it's podcast. More, um the building blocks for myself and you know hopefully someone else can find benefit in in sort of reinventing yourself and reinventing the authentic self as opposed to what you know has kind of uh, come along in your life without you mm. putting much thought and um process to it sort of comes in and you think oh, i don't really feel i'm authentic to who i am and so working mm. through that is what is what um you know this podcast is about so hopefully people oh beautiful resonate. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well done. Well done. Well, so lovely to uh to see you. Yes, you too. I know it's been a while, Virtually. but um I'll have you again soon and and thank you for tuning in and be sure to subscribe to Salubra Skin with Dr. Irene and and if you need to connect with Shireen, which would be fantastic because I'm certainly feeling I need to as well. <laughs> um all those details will be listed below and uh, please leave your comments or anything that you would like to hear about in the comment section below and we'll check you with the next episode of Salubrious Skin with Dr. Irene.